Hyperbaric oxygen or ozone therapy, which is the right one for you or for your patient? It completely depends on what the goals are. Both are great. I love all oxygen therapies, but each one really has its own use. And so you have to understand some of the similarities and absolutely, mostly the differences so you know when to apply which therapy for which patient. That's what we're gonna cover in this video. Hyperbaric oxygen, we've covered in great detail in all of these videos. Please feel free to look back on some of the older videos to get more about what is hyperbaric oxygen. Today, we're gonna to be answering the question of should you be using hyperbaric oxygen or should you be using ozone therapy? So what is ozone? Ozone is O3. In other words, it's three oxygen molecules bound together versus molecular oxygen, which is how it's found in the air that you're breathing, which is O2. O2 is a very stable molecule, and O2 is the way you bring oxygen into your body right now when you breathe to deliver it to, let's say, to your mitochondria for normal cellular respiration. O3 needs to be created. And so what we do is we take medical grade oxygen and we feed that through what's called an ozone generator. And that ozone generator creates this molecule O3. And then there's multiple ways you can get O3 in your body. You can do insufflation. So you could do rectal insufflation, vaginal ins insufflation. You could do auricular insufflation. You're basically allowing that gas to enter your body. You could also run ozone directly from an ozonated bag and do a direct ozone IV. And or you can run that ozone. You can pull a patient's blood, run it through an ozone machine, and then feed that blood back to the patient. So there's many different ways to deliver ozone to that patient. But why would you? What's the difference in terms of the therapy? The easiest way I can explain it in just a few minutes would be ozone is not as stable. O3 is not as stable of a molecule as O2. And there's benefits to that. So the instability of that ozone molecule is that that oxygen, that extra, that third oxygen molecule is very highly reactive. So when we talk about using oxygen as an oxidative source, ozone is an incredible stimulator of oxidation, specifically when we're trying to use that oxidative effect to kill infections. So when we have patients with either acute infections or even subacute chronic infections that the body is really having a hard time getting rid of or having a hard time just quarantining so that it becomes unreactive inside their body, ozone can be an amazing tool for that. By delivering that unstable oxygen molecule and increasing the oxidative effect of ozone, you could absolutely use that to feed the immune system what the immune system needs to help fight that infection. Once that third molecule is kicked off of O3, you now are left with O2. And so not only does it give you that unstable reactive molecule to, for cell signaling and immune system function, it also does increase the O2 level inside the body. And so if we wanted to feed the body some extra oxygen, ozone is absolutely a great way to do that. Hyperbaric also feeds the body an amazing amount of oxygen, O2. And one of the benefits or the side effects of hyperbaric oxygen is the creation of superoxide, which is a free radical. And so that free radical also is an unstable molecule that causes oxidation and stimulates oxidation. So both of these devices are giving you O2, and both of these devices are giving you some amount of oxidation. So when should you use one versus when should you use the other? Well, if your goal is to uh, get the oxidative effect specifically for the immune system function, I would say ozone is a more powerful tool. Hyperbaric absolutely can help with that. But if that was the entire goal, ozone would be a, uh, would be a stronger tool to do that. If your goal was to get more O2 and have that O2 be a stimulator for tissue repair, regeneration, uh, the general anti-inflammatory effect, the stem cell response, well, then hyperbaric would be the better tool. Even though ozone does deliver some O2 because it once you get rid of that unstable oxygen, what's left is molecular oxygen, O2, the amount of oxygen you get from hyperbaric far exceeds anything that ozone or really any other device can do. So if the goal is to really upregulate O2 molecules, regular molecular oxygen for healing, recovery, regeneration. Hyperbaric is the key to that. It will also stimulate that oxidation, but not as strongly as ozone does. Both are great. Both absolutely help tons and tons of patients, but they do have some differences and understanding what the goal or the need of the patient is will help you decide when to use one versus the other. There are absolutely cases you may use both. In those cases, we typically don't do them in the same day. So we might do ozone therapy followed by a hyperbaric the next day. We also might do a series of ozone treatments for a period of time, finish the benefits of that, 
and then move into hyperbaric and then do a series of hyperbaric. Again, there's no definitive rhyme or reason. You have to use your clinical judgment when you're figuring this out with patients, but understanding number one, what's the patient issue? What's the patient's goal? How these two different pieces of equipment work and how are we gonna come up with a rationale for how and when we're gonna apply these for the patient. That's the clinical piece that you need to be working on and understanding all these pieces and considering all of them before doing that is, is critical for, for obviously for patients to get the benefit that they need. I hope you find that helpful. If you like this video, if you like this content, please click the like, please subscribe and absolutely share this video with somebody that you think might benefit from the information. We'll see you next time. So whether you're a chiropractor or a naturopath or an acupuncturist or a DO or even an MD, but you're looking at hyperbarics through this lens, the lens that I'm describing, which is applying hyperbarics for all these off-label conditions, this is the class that teaches that. And right now it's the only class that teaches this type of hyperbarics in this way. And that's an actual certification course. Check out hbotusa.com and uh, right across the, the top, you'll see upcoming events. You can click on that and it'll show you uh, when our next courses are gonna be.